Let's analyze this mix coming right up. Okay, so I managed to get what I think are very good vocal tracks in the studio. And we will take a look here. Uh, you're probably going to notice that there is a lot of volume automation. What I will make, uh, I'll, just, I'll just say up front, I had every intention in actually doing the mixing part of this series live as I mix. It became very obvious though that it wasn't going to be practical to do that. It would have just taken too long. It takes me hours to mix down these tracks and to mix a, a, a final version of a song and a lot of it is really really boring, repetitive, over and over and over again things. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go in depth as I can about what I did during the mixing of this uh, these tracks and this song. Uh, so yes, I, I ended up doing vocals and I got very nice tracks in the studio and uh, here's the lead vocal here and as it turns out uh, it, it came out really really good. Uh, you'll, you'll notice I did a lot of volume automation for spots here that um, were a little low when I sang the vocals uh, but for the most part, it was a very, very nice uh, capture of the vocal. Here's a very low spot where I had to really increase the volume for, to punch that line out. And uh, as it turns out, the, all three parts, all three vocals were really, really nice. Here's a lot of, I do a lot of volume automation, a lot of gain riding through automation to make sure that vocals are sitting just where they should be sitting. It takes some time to do that. It's worth the effort because otherwise your vocals can get buried and it just the mix becomes unbalanced and you can't really hear all too well. Now, I did mention in the studio episode that if I heard any little spots in a vo in a vocal that I thought needed some pitch correction, I wouldn't hesitate to use it. There was only happily one spot that actually needed it in the lead vocal, this purple line here, represents the automa automation line for a, um, a little bit of a pitch correction. And other than that, this one little spot here where I just bump, bumped it up by a couple of, uh, shifted by a couple of cents, uh, it was, everything else was fine. And that's really the goal. I don't particularly care to pitch correct. Uh, it's a very long process. It introduces artifacts at times if it doesn't work out well. I've done some heavy pitch correcting sessions with singers and stuff, and it's way better to get the takes sung well rather than um, need to use pitch correction. And here is the, the background harmony tracks, which came out extremely well. I needed no pitch correction for them, and I'm very happy that that happened. That's also less processing power, too, I need. But certainly volume automation in spots here. I had to bring down this mid part a little and bring up this high part a little. All kinds of gain riding here to make sure that everything is level and doing what I want uh, all throughout the song. All the rest of the parts here, the, the bass part, I also did a lot of... Um, gain riding for the bass part. Every track you'll notice has look at the drums here. I mean, I have so much, so much happening uh, with with gain riding to to make things uh, as balanced as I can on the on the raw tracks. I do. You will go. I'll, I'll go into compression and limiting and all those kind of things. All those things plugins help to the cause. They help the cause of keeping things level and balanced and and tight and all but there's nothing like a little more gain riding to really nail it down okay on to the business of sounds for this song and uh... well i guess we can just break it out by by some tracks and take a look at what i did uh... here's the lead vocal track for example and outside of the here's the the um, 
the little pitch correction plugin that I use right in Reaper is a great um, uh, it's Ray Pitch and it's automatable and and that's a very cool thing uh, EQ wise uh, all I really did was just um, you know apply a low shelf and kinda uh, take out the bottom end here you know I took out all this on on my lead vocal that I really didn't need and I also uh, compressed the the vocal as well to keep the the gain of the vocal very tight um, but with with lead vocal uh, what I do often is I match it up with bass because uh, lead vocal can sometimes uh, get in the bass can get in the way of lead vocal. They can kind of step on each other if you're not careful, and so uh, you, know, you have to be very mindful of that. Put me through. I can't compare it to anything I've ever seen. I've seen love gone bad, but honey, that don't compare to what you put me through. Now take a look at. Uh, I'll bring up uh, the the bass. I'll I'll play that again. And look what happens in the bass. I couldn't take it anymore. Girl, you got cold right to the core. Now it sounds well. I'm a patient. That sounds awfully thin, but it was necessary. That's a pretty severe chop there all the way up uh, and I, I gave it a little boost at uh, uh, about 30 just under 3500 uh, just gave it a little boost to bring out the finger action on the strings and uh, and I also gave the bass some uh, limiting to keep it down in the range where I wanted to uh, but really it's a balancing act between uh, not having the bass step all over the lead vocal so and you know bass is a real tough one to get right overall in a song it's very very difficult in the mix to get the bass right and uh, I don't profess to be great at it it's a lot of trial and error until I get it to where I want it and listening back on different playback systems and uh, to make sure I have it where I want it uh, for background vocals, just the same. Uh, EQing and compression. And let's see, drums. Drums, I really just uh, limited. Just threw a limiter in there uh, to keep them under control. And I went, I, I kind of. I was into limiting this mix. I never, I never do the same thing twice. It seems I have some go-to methods that I do, but I always tend to go about things a little differently each time I mix. And this, this time I was into limiting stuff rather than a lot of compression. The acoustic strum track had a very interesting. Uh, I just limited that after EQ. The acoustic strum track uh, I made very thin because uh, here's, here's the EQ disabled. And there it is enabled. Now, I frankly, if I'm listening to the strum guitar by itself, I prefer no EQ. I, I love the range of the acoustic guitar by itself, but within the track, it had to be thinned out and a lot chopped off on the bottom end so that it would sound proper with uh, the bass and guitars and vocal. And I'll play the same spot together here. So it was real important to get the bass and acoustic strum working well together. And a lot of that has to do with chopping the certain parts out of the lower end of the EQ spectrum here uh, to, uh, 
to make them happy down there and and coexisting together without stepping all over one another and making mud, the famous mud. I really didn't do anything much to the steel and fiddle tracks. There is absolutely no EQ on any steel or fiddle tracks uh, because they're just recorded so darn well. I mean, they, they sound great. I, I just typically don't need to EQ these instruments uh, from the real tracks. They're recorded very well and I don't like to mess with them. But down here, the lower instrument, the, certainly my vocals and bass and drums and acoustic guitars and things, they need to be EQ'd and sculpted a little bit to be happy together and coincide together. And the other thing we'll take a look at is the instrument and vocal reverbs. Uh, this is the instrument reverb and I use waves uh, true verbs for both the instrument and the vocals and uh, it, it the, v the verb is always another challenge I, I don't like to have things too wet I don't like to have things too dry uh, sometimes it calls for a little wetter reverb this one did not it's always a tricky little balancing act to get the verbs right serious you're making me so I'll change my name a little for a while it's the vocal verb. What you put me through I can't compare it to anything I've ever seen That's dry I've seen love gone bad But honey that don't compare To what you put me through And if you Same thing with the instruments Now you'll hear it dry It's very, very subtle. I don't like to get too crazy with reverb because, again, it will make uh, things very, very muddy. So I tend to not go crazy with with reverbs. Uh, just enough to give it some flavor, but not too much that it's bathed. Unless it really, really, really calls for it. And sometimes it does, but more, more often than not, for me, in my material, it doesn't. And last but lot, not least, uh, the master bus. I have uh, some things on it. I have uh, compression. I have limiting. And I just have a, a, a waves analyzer to take a look at in real time what's going on uh, while this track plays. And without them, uh, this is the result. with them the so do you or don't you I mean what what side of the argument does anybody fall on and does do, do a lot of people care I see merits on both sides I fall into the category of mixing into the plugins while I mix it just gives me a very good indication of what I'm, where I'm going with the multi-tracks and what's going to be happening with mastering. Uh, and it's kind of like mastering all at the same time as mixing. Uh, so, there you go. You either do it or you don't and argue about it. But uh, it, I usually land on the side of mixing into the plugins so I know if what I'm doing on the multi-tracks uh, and adjusting is working within mastering plugins, it helps me. It helps me. So that's the way. That's the side of the argument I land on. So there you go. I mean, that's uh, that. That wraps up really the essence of the mix of this song. This one came out really, really good, and I uh, I will post a link to it to to get to the final version. Doing this little series has been a tremendous amount of fun. I hope you all who have tuned in have enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and checking out this whole little series. I hope you got something out of it. And I will see you all again soon. Take care and good luck with your Band of the Box songs and mixes. And write some good stuff. Take care now.
Bye. 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 Bye.